How are we all doing today? Good morning. Good morning, my kings and queens of Twitch. <laughs> How we doing? Good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome, guys. Welcome, welcome. Distracted, send help. Thank you for the follow. Z dubs with the gifted sub. Thank you, thank you. And Marissa Newton with the prime resub. Two months. Welcome back. Welcome back. How are we guys doing? Kings, queens, and emperors. Yes, of course. Yes. yes, of course. How we doing? Love the shirt. Thank you so much. Online ceramics. Crappy little hands just resubscribed for five months. I have risen, but refuse to grind. Crappy little hands. Thank you for the resub. Welcome back. You don't have to do any grinding here. Okay. There's no grinding being Cut asked. Cartoffle six just resubscribed for six months. Bless up, Mr. Cartoffle six. Thank you for the prime resub. Thank you, thank you. Welcome back. Welcome back. Yes, the um, yes. This is not like a pro Jared group chat. Just gifted two subs. There's no grinding required. Wow, okay, wait. Walking Walking on a dream? Walking on a dream. I have I have such a hard time with reading. Just reading. But thank you for the resub. Welcome back. And then Aw Kendall's with two gifted subs. Thank you so much. That's so sweet. Ba ba. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm uh Who's your favorite Dodger? So this is a little bit of a fake out cuz it's not a full Dodger hat. See, there's little things on here, but this is a This is like a brand that is not baseball. Sorry, I just like the letters. Some of my favorite letters, actually. L and A. Some of my favorite members of the Alphabet Squad. Zach the Sound that says fake L. Who's your favorite Dodger, Zach? This is my favorite. This is my favorite. A jammy dodger. You guys ever have jammy dodgers? Delicious. This is an incredible dodger. I think this is a British thing. Jammy dodger. A true Brexit geezer. Yep, it's a popular British biscuit, isn't it? You dirty wanker. It's a popular British biscuit. Wow. I would always have those at my my nan's house. Not my grandma, my nan, okay? I'd have it at my nan's. All right. All right. When are you converting to full Britishism? After Brexit, I'm not interested. Looks like a prolapse. Yeah, delicious. Wow. I just want to, <laughs> you know. <sighs> Yeah, I, you know, it's funny because I, as a kid, England is like a concept felt so magical to me <laughs> because it, it was always like this mysterious place on the other side of the planet that in my 
in my brain as a kid, it was like you have to go through all these hoops and this long journey to get there. And then I'd get there and I'd see my grandma and my grandpa and they would spoil me and it was really pretty where they lived. It's like you'd open the door of their house and across the street was like this giant, this little street, by the way. It's like a, a little, little road and this giant green grass that looked like the Microsoft uh, desktop. Uh, is that Microsoft? Yeah. Just this bit like that. And there would be a bunch of uh, sheep all over. And so I'd go there and I'd just be like, I'd be like, wow, this place is incredible. <laughs> I was like, this place is so cool. They get a little older and like start to learn more about the political landscape and you know the world's conquering and stuff and then on top of that brexit and what fueled brexit which is a bunch of stupidity and then you know it's just it's not as magical as it was are you sick? I always sound awful. I actually have a... Let me... This is not the best content. Hold on. Hold on. I'm just confirming. I, I actually remember now, after saying that I always sound sick, I made a doctor's appointment uh, to see if I have, like, a nose problem. Uh, let's see. I have a nose. Deviated septum is what I'm trying to figure out if I have. Yes. That is correct. Um, because I'm always blocked. Zach says, Ian, I'm pooping. Zach, you should get a Lego set that's a fucking toilet full of shit. That'd be a cool set. Right? That'd be pretty fun. View appointment. August 3rd. Okay, okay, I got two days. I just needed to make sure it wasn't uh, today. We good. Sorry for the, uh, the distraction. Um, let's see. Zach, I can't talk about that here. I can't speak on that. Zach's, Zach's trying to push some bootleg bootlego in the chat. I can't be promoting that. I don't know nothing about nothing. Zach's gone to the dark side of Lego. He's gone off the grid. He's gone off the brick. Jazby zero. Jazby. Ten subs. Ten gifted subs. What? Holy shit! Jazby. Swaggy. Thank you, Jazby. Oh my god, that's so nice of you. That's a big swaggy alert. We're we're that woke me up. Thank you, thank you. I might, I might have to go to boot Lego after that. <clears throat> boot Lego. Where can I get that shirt? Uh, it's from uh, Online Ceramics. This is the name of the brand. Yeah, there's a whole subreddit. Why, why did I pause between hole and subreddit? There's a hole subreddit it's not a subreddit about holes i meant to say there's a whole subreddit not a whole subreddit don't go there i'm not promoting that <laughs> zach's saying stop no 
I'm just saying, Zach and I got plugged in to a whole subreddit about bootlego that we've been looking at that is just interesting for educational purposes. Obviously would not betray the brick. Would not betray the brick. Zach said you're giving away the goods. I'm not saying what it is. I'm not promoting it. There's some wild shit. Zach says we stand big brick. Yeah, we need like a version of this for the Danish. The BTS uh, Lego. It's like Lego claws. I don't know, something to represent. Uh, so yeah. Let's see. How are you guys doing? We got a couple things, of course, today. We got to check. Of course, we got to check Hello Giggles, right? Figure out what's going on over there. Daily news. Horoscope. We got work today. So I'm, at some point, I will have to go to work. <laughs> Temu is a brick imposter. Amugus. I have heard of that. I would not go there. I did send Zach, let's see, let me see if I can try and find it, yes, I did send Zach this uh, off the grid, where is this, I can show this. It's a building block. This is not a Lego. It's a building block. Okay? The Marlboro Mech. <laughs> I did send this to Zach. It's a building block. I don't think Lego would sell that one. I don't know if that one would be uh, on the marketplace. <laughs> the Marlboro Warrior. You know, yeah, Lego has to step it up a little bit. They're they're going too slow. Sick architecture set. Thank you, thank you. It's not Lego. Marlboro, Marble, Marble. Lego needs an 18 plus adult Lego, just like a giant Lego fuck doll. I don't think that'd be too comfortable. You see what happens when you step on some of those pieces. You know. Yeah, no? Big ouch. Yes, big ouch. I'm just waiting on... Zach gave me a, a Lego gift card for my birthday, and it's been burning a hole in my pocket. I'm holding out, waiting in the off chance that this comes out soon. I will buy this. Immediately. I want this so bad. <clears throat> I would love to get this one. Uh, but they have not confirmed when it comes out. But it is confirmed coming out. That one is coming out soon. And then so is... There's one other one that is confirmed... This is also confirmed. This will apparently be coming out soon. So, I, I'll probably have to get this one too. <laughs> Very fun. It's just, I wish, 
it looks kind of lifeless in the face. Like the face looks kind of dead in the eyes. You know? It's just these two bulbs. Uh, most cats are. You haven't seen my son. He, they, I need Lego versions of him where he's doing this. Uh, but yeah, I wish I could get a custom version that's more, that looks more like our cats, but I guess that would be pretty boring. Are you fostering any cats at the moment? No, not yet. We're still like kind of waiting to hear if the last one's got adopted. So far, so far, no luck. Do you guys see this thing about Stephen Amell? Arrow? Did anybody watch Arrow? I used to be such a little dork nerd. So, for a little, little context, a little backstory. Um, after high school, I moved to... I moved to San Francisco to go to community college. I went to community college there. CCSF. Gang. And I was miserable. <laughs> I was miserable. I lived... I lived... Uh, I moved there without knowing anybody. And... I... Um, What the fuck? The load screen didn't go away? Well, really? <laughs> uh, I moved there. I didn't know anybody. And the thing was, because I was going to City College, like, pretty much everybody in my class was all, like, 40 years old or older. Uh... I did not, it wasn't very easy to make friends. I was fresh out of high school. Yeah, I was uh, 18. Yes. Yeah, I had like just turned 18. And um, what is community college? We don't have that in Australia. It's like our version of um, like publicly funded college that we offer that's way, way cheaper than regular university. Um, but it only goes for two years. You can't go there for four years. So, <clears throat> yeah. Um, it was, it was, uh, can we start just paid rent chat? Just paid twelve forty for a one bedroom, one living room, one kitchen, one bath in Carrollton, Texas. That sounds pretty good. What were you studying? I really didn't know. I was a mess. I had no clue what the hell I was doing in school. But Yeah, the thing, I was so, like, isolated, it was weird. I would get that feeling where I was like, this city is so big. There's so many people here. Yet I felt super alone in a sad... I'm just a poor little city mouse, country mouse. No, no, but... It just... It was, um... It's a weird feeling. I feel like if you're in a city and you're feeling lonely, it like hyper, it hyper focuses on that feeling because you're like, there's people literally everywhere. I can bang on the wall and there's like, they'll scatter like a bunch of, like a bunch of bugs. There's probably like eight people in there. Why, why do I feel this way? Why is it so hard to meet people? I don't know. I was out of, out of high school too. I was probably more nervous. Be easier now. 
but <clears throat> I had that feeling when I first moved out. I used to cry in the city park eating soggy McDonald's. That's an album cover right there. Just think, if you're sitting anywhere sad, just think, imagine that you're in your own really cool, like, uh, like, um, uh, James Blunt music video. And you're like, wow, this is cool. So Lana Del Rey. Yeah. Pretend that you're, people are seeing you in black and white and a cool Lana Del Rey EP visual album and then suddenly that mcdonald's might start hitting a little more <laughs> yeah sitting in school alone sad eating is the worst those are hard times those are hard times Where you hit that bathroom stall lunch with all the shit particles floating around your pb and j that's, I don't know whose music video that is. I don't know whose that is. But anyways, yeah, I, <clears throat> I was so bored and isolated, but I lived right next to this tiny library in San Francisco. So I'd walk over there and I would rent um, just seasons of television, everything I could get my hands on <laughs> just to fill up some time. And the first one of those that I was like, Oh, this is a, this is an investment is Smallville. I watched all of Smallville, the whole thing. I liked it at the time. And then it would probably not hold up. Why? Well, I, I, not even probably. It would not hold up. I loved Smallville. I gotta look that up here. I'll show you. It's the Superman origin show on CW. <clears throat> Ian, do you know Tyler from San Fran? I don't think I know Tyler. This is Smallville. Uh, yes, the Nexium girl uh, is in it. Yep. Allison Mack. Let me, let me move over here so you guys can see better. Uh, yes, this is Nexium uh, here, but I loved Michael Rosenbaum, this guy, Lex Luthor. I thought he was so good. There's 10 seasons of this fucking show. 10. I watched the whole thing. Oh yeah, Jensen Ackles is in it, right? For like an episode. Uh, they had a couple cameos in here. But this, this show definitely kicked off. Uh, it opened Pandora's box of dog shit. Uh, Fenster Games just subscribed. Fenster Games, thank you for the Prime. Thank you, welcome. Hassan Izzard, what's up? We're just talking about... Well, it's all building up to... This is a long preamble. Uh, talking about Smallville was the first like CW show, the, the DC one that I watched. I was in San Francisco, and then I also was... I was going to that library. I was renting Smallville. And then at that point, I started checking out a bunch of uh, comic books. I became like a total comic book guy. For a little bit. Kate Felly just resubscribed for four months. 
Happy to be here before I dip for work. Rise and grind, Kate Felly. You know how it goes. Happy to have you. Thank you for the resub. <clears throat> I like your shirt. What does the bottom say? It says, we are all just walking each other home. Ram Das. Lukeski very, 14 very just happy. subscribed. Lukeski, thank you for the prime. Welcome. Lukeski. Lukeski. Uh, who's your favorite superhero? I don't know. At the time, it was Superman. I thought Superman was so fun. Uh, but yeah. So I was renting all these comic books, and then there was a comic book store in San Francisco down the street. Uh, I wonder, what was it called? I'm trying to find it. And they would do... They would do a... Uh, I was like, I had no money, <laughs> and so they would do these screenings of like super nerd shit. They did like a Doctor Who thing. I'd never seen the show. I did not like Doctor Who, but they would, they gave out free food, and they screened screened it in the uh, in the comic book store. So I would go and eat and watch this shit I, uh, just to get like get some dinner um but i remember they did they did they got super hyped up when arrow premiered on the cw which is sort of the next version of birthed out of smallville it's arrow which is about the green arrow this was on the cw and I remember they <clears throat> were really hyped up about Arrow. I went and they gave out like free breakfast burritos. It was a good vibe <laughs> at the time. And I was excited because I was a Smallville guy. And it was fine. It was fine. I watched like the first cup, the first season. If I were to watch that now, I would probably hate the show. And they really jumped the shark uh, as well. I'm trying to find this comic book store. It's so weird. I'm like, I'm my sense of direction in San Francisco is all turned around. I'm like trying to remember where it was oh my god I can't remember I can't remember it's been so long you skipped heroes no I actually did watch I watched heroes a little later um, but yeah that so Stephen Amell the main guy well, I always thought it seemed like a cool dude. I don't know. Based whenever I saw him in interviews, he seemed like a nice, chill guy. But he just put this statement out. He was caught in a video talking about the writer's strike. And he was bitching about it. Let's see if you can even hear this. I support my union. I do, and I stand with them. I do not support striking. I don't. I think I don't. You know he thinks he's getting in his bag too. He's doing this soft talky like smart guy. I support unions. I do. Do I support strikes? I don't. Maybe he's playing a character, because doesn't he play uh, in in uh, Arrow, the TV show? I'm pretty sure he plays like a, um, a rich asshole. I think that might be his alter ego. So maybe he's getting in. Maybe he's getting in character. You know, he's like, uh, yeah, he's method acting. He's. It's like the it's 
It's like um. Oh, what's his name? Why am I why am I drawing a blank on his name? Who am I talking about? Who talks like this? Who talks like this from now on? Why Austin Butler? That's right, like Austin Butler. Austin Butler cannot stop being Elvis, and this guy can't stop being a rich asshole. Sometimes the role just takes over. Sometimes. I think that is a uh, reductive negotiating tactic. And um, I find the entire thing incredibly uh, frustrating. And I think that the thinking as it pertains to shows like the show that I'm on that premiered last night, I think that is. Woo! I think that it is. Fucking nerds. Goddamn nerds. He should have just said. And y'all get free Funko Pops. And it all busts a nut. Uh, I think it's myopic. And um, I stand with my union. So there you have it. Arrow. Just sent an arrow to the chest of nerds across the country. Uh... What's that sock choice? You know... <clears throat> oh, yeah, I did not notice that. Damn, he's a Navi under there. Under his pants. Blue Man Group. He made some great points, though. Um... If the point was <laughs> how to show that you don't understand how unions or how striking is effective, um, because he says, what does he say? He, his exact wording was, uh, okay. His exact wording was, I do not support striking. I don't. I think it's a reductive negotiating tactic, and I find the entire thing entirely frustrating. So I think what Stephen, Stephen A, <laughs> Stephen, the other Stephen A, is struggling to, to understand here is... It's almost like he thinks that his union was like, we have these things that we want. So Garabrand let's all just, just stop working. For six months. Garabrand, thank you for the resub. Six months. Thank you, thank you. Do I support Garabrand? I do. Uh, he's he, The way he's talking about it is like, all these people are like, we want something. So let's just give up working. You know, let's just do that as a, as, and we'll strong arm them. It's like, no, there, there was a lot of what he would probably perceive as like positive, non-reductive negotiating that has been happening against a brick wall which is the studios that say, no, we are not interested in doing that at all like we do not want to we we have no interest why the fuck would we listen to you with, with what you're asking for no thanks so striking is sort of um one of the last resorts that people use frankly i think they should do it more often <laughs> really i mean these are that's how pe how how you show that you you have power amongst the giant group. You know these are all the people running, running the actual planning and building of all these programs. So I don't know. It's too bad. But all things considered, I I saw this as. 
the fact that this is the first actor I've really seen say anything like this, some fucking dude from the CW, whose show is not even on anymore. Um, that's pretty good, right? It seems pretty good. <clears throat> Would he feel differently if he wasn't on a show on Star Trek now? So, oh, is that... So he is on a show. Oh, well, he does mention that clip that he's uh, promoting something. So... Yeah, I mean, I get if you... I get if he's been working on something for a while. And due to timing... He's frustrated that he can't talk about it. But... That's sort of, it's just an unfortunate trade-off, you know? Um, but he's centering him his own personal timing and experience to then make this declaration about the entire tactic of striking, which I think is pretty fucking ridiculous. But... It's like, um, everyone is frustrated. Yeah, exactly. Like, I just saw... So I was just watching, I just watched this um, movie uh, on Netflix yesterday or the day before. Um, it came out the day after the strike started, I think, called uh, They Cloned Tyrone. Have you guys heard of this? Uh, super fun movie. And I was thinking, I'm like, damn, like, none of these actors can, like, talk about this cool movie they just made. Came out the day the strike started. And, you know, it's a low-key movie. Like, this doesn't have, like, a giant advertising uh, arm Like, there's no billboards or anything like that all over the place. So, um, but it's just, it happens. It's, it happens. It sucks. But, you know, don't then make this generalization about all striking. It's crazy. Why is Mac Miller trending? What? Why is Mac Miller trending? What happened? People comparing the Angus Cloud situation to Mac Miller. Very. Wait. Let's, let's stop the. Bo Although Mac Miller and Angus may have similarities, I think it's insensitive to say we lost Mac Miller twice. Who the fuck is saying that? And once again, Mac Miller has died. What the hell? Just a weird dialogue. Just because they look slightly, you know, because they look slightly similar. It's just fucking weird. To to get to the point where Mac Miller's trending with 60,000 tweets. I'm sure all saying the same thing. It's just weird. Very different circumstances, too. That, that Angus Cloud shit is heartbreaking. Heartbreaking, horribly devastating shit. <clears throat> Pretty awful. It sounds like he was having a severe, severe struggle with uh, the loss of his father. I don't know. They haven't confirmed what happened, but, you know. Just horrible, horrible, horrible. It's really, really fucking sad. Really sad. Uh. 
Um, <clears throat> Internet has no self awareness when it comes to these topics. Yeah. It's just weird. Ah, oh, this guy reminded me of this other guy who died. It's just like, what the fuck is where? Why is you? Why is your brain? Why your brain do this? Why your brain do this? What's on the docket for today? We just shooting the shit. We just chilling. I have work today. I have so. I'm just doing a little morning stream. I want to start doing these more often. Ian, you're looking buff. Yeah, I've been watching a lot of exercise videos. So it's been mentally making me feel stronger. I've been watching a bunch. Uh, yeah, what else we got going on here? Be in his life treating you well. How's your happiness? It's good. It's good. Things are going good. What's your favorite song off the Barbie playlist? This is embarrassing, but okay. Uh, two things. I think it's pretty. Inc uh, it's pretty wild that. Um, So the Barbie album, the um, Billie Eilish song is like a hit. It's so melancholy and down-tempo sad. <clears throat> and that song is a hit. I think that's pretty remarkable that she could pull that off. Not many artists can do that. I'm so sick of hearing it. I'm sorry. I haven't heard it too many times, but I could see how you could be in situations where it would play a lot. But yeah, no, B B Billy, uh, the fact that she was able to do that is pretty cool. Um, I'll be honest, I was listening to that song in the car the other day, and it made me tear up. It made me very sad. I got got by the fucking Barbie soundtrack. I don't, um, I don't, uh, thoughts on the Tame and Paul track. I haven't listened to the whole album. I wasn't crazy about the Charlie XCX song. I, it was, it was fine. Same with the Dua Lipa song. It's like, it's, it's. Sounds like songs she's made before. Uh, the Ice Spice one is stuck in my head all the time. Uh, but yeah. What else we got going on here? Sam says I should audition for Big Brother. I thought about it at one point. Because I used to be... I had one year where I watched one season of the show and I got very invested. <laughs> the thing is, I would have to go in there for like three months. They just announced the new season, the new cast. You have to go in there for a long time and you can't even br you can't bring a phone you can't go on the internet you cannot um you can't even like read books like you can't bring books uh it's all you can do is get drunk and fight they only let you bring the Bible. Yeah, that's what I heard.
Why would Sam want to sentence you to that? Probably wants a break from my ass. I'm just kidding. <laughs> she's sick of... She's like, go in the big brother house. That's like the dog house. Go to the dog... You're going to the dog house. The thing is, I would probably get voted off very quickly. I, I think I would get voted off the show very quickly because... I would be a, I would be such a fucking rat. I would get in that house. I'd be such a rat. I know it. I would go to six different people in six different conversations, and I'd say, you know, Johnson over there. He says that you're. He says that he thinks you're a threat, and he thinks that you're a snake, and he thinks that you have questionable character. And I, I I, agree about all that about Johnson. I think you're a good guy. I think you're a great guy, actually. And I think we should team up. We should team up because we don't want to deal with that. That guy's a piece of shit. And then I'd go over to Johnson and I'd go, Johnson. Donovan over there, is a, he said that you're a fucking snake. And a piece of shit. I do that to literally every single person in the house. <laughs> Sam said, Ian, do you want breakfast? I would love breakfast. That's incredible, Sam. That's that would be incredible. And you that would that would be very incredible of you to do that. Make a final two with every person. Yes. Has anyone tried this? Has anyone tried this in Big Brother? Going to literally every single person and saying, hey, hey, you and me, we could go places. Every person. And I say, fuck all these other people. Fuck all of them. It's you and me. Crab Slapper 69. Thank you for the resub. Thank you. Thank you. Tyler from Big Brother 20. Wait, which one did I watch? Uh, oh, I I like half watched. I watched some of this one, very little. Okay, that's right. Okay. My old roommate watched this season, so it was always on the TV, but I was not fully plugged in. Uh, this guy right here, I've seen him at my gym like a bunch of times. <laughs> Not as much lately. Uh, I I got really into Big Brother 21. This was the one season that I was like, I watched the whole thing. <clears throat> And my, my roommate was so into it that they would put on, like, the, the fucking live feed. <laughs> Which is next level. But Big Brother always has, like, one, like, older goofball. And that was my boy, Cliff. Cliff right here was my boy. Cliffy. I think it's funny, though. They're always like, okay, we need one, like, old person. Old person. <laughs> Every time. Uh, but yeah, I'm curious if I were to go on the show and try to be going in with the intention of being the biggest rat. How, how long until they'd catch on? Like, I wonder how long. Because in order for them to catch on, they would have to tell each other. Hassan is a gifted Julie Argulia 96 a subscription. Hassan is a gifted a tier Hassan one is sub to Julie Argulia 96. Thank you for the they gifted. Have given thank six you. gift subs in the channel. Thank you. Thank you. Well, you're incriminating yourself right now. No, this is hypothetical. I, I want to ask Turner... I want to ask Turner his opinion. 
hypothetically, if I went in and I said, okay, well, there's, let's see. These are all the house guests. So if I did a final two, <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirty, four, fifty. If I did fifteen different final twos, fifteen different al alliances, how long? Look up Ronnie the Rat from season eleven. I love that there's a there's there's precedent. People talk about everything when they have nothing to do. People would know pretty quick. You know what would also be funny, but would also also stress me out is that because you can't get online you don't know how you're being perceived Stoopsney you know just gifted one son stoops need thank you for the gifted thank you so much none of these people know if they're they're being made out to be like the bad guy or the asshole, the way that it's being edited. So they don't know. I would be so curious how I would be perceived in the lot, like in the Big Brother community, if there would be like the Big Brother subreddit or something. They're like, this Ian guy is such a fucking asshole. He is such a rat. <laughs> <laughs> It'd be so funny. People are always delusional as to how well liked they are in the house. I'm telling you, I would probably be perceived as a rat. I'd go into it with that method. I think it'd be funny. But I would probably... That would probably backfire, actually. Dog, I heard the PA was talking shit on you. Yeah, I do like psychological warfare. I'd take like, I'd take like someone's yogurt and I'd like throw it away. And then I'd go over to like Chrysanthemum or whoever, their, whatever their name is. And I'd go, hey. Bobby, he ate your yogurt. And he actually said... I can't even repeat it. He said... He said, I'm going to eat chrysanthemums yogurt. And I said, I don't think that they're going to like that. And he said, this is my yogurt now. Fuck any yogurt bitches that have a problem. Is what he said. That basically happened with Muffin Gate. See, there's a thing for everything. No Gert. <laughs> I would be, yes. I would be doing, I'd be moving shit. The audience would love you, but you'd get voted out so fast. <laughs> that. See, that's the thing is because I don't necessarily know if I would want to be in there for three months anyway. So why not go in and be a little devilish, you know? <laughs> uh, have some fun. You know, me saying all this is killing my chances of ever getting on the show anyway. Not to mention, if anybody actually, if I ever actually did try to get on... And they found this clip. I'm fucked. I'm fucked. You know what? I'm only saying this as a joke. If I got on the show, I would be very nice and very accommodating to all of my housemates. I would be very sweet and actually peaceful. This is a joke. Parody. Disclaimer. Kidding. Kidding. I would be so nice and kind. 
to everybody. You know, one thing about Big Brother. Kells 26G just resubscribed for four months. Word. Word. Welcome back, Kells. Resub four months. Thank you, thank you. The way that they decorate the Big Brother house is how I want to decorate my real house. Don't tell Sam. <clears throat> But I would like actually want this to... Look at this. This is cool. They got the panels, the pal. Big ass table. This, not so much. Hate this room. Now this, I would love to have a big stinky cheese bed thing. Foam mattress, whatever the hell this is. This is... This would be my bed. I would go sleep on this. <laughs> I would go sleep on it. Yeah. Ian the rat is nibbling on the cheese bed again. I'd be in there going. The rat bed is awesome. <laughs> Uh, and then this, I don't know what the hell is going on here. It would also be fun to decorate my house like this, though. Okay, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I can't say that it's, you know, it's fun, it's fun. I want the big rat cheese bed, though. That bed is some shit Jerry would love. Sam, if you're watching, can we get rid of our mattress and get the cheese bed? That'd be incredible. We don't need our our Charlie and Dixie D'Amelio mattress. We need the cheese mattress. That'll be fun. Maybe I'll watch some of this new season. I'm curious. I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued. What can I say? All right, let's check Hello Giggles. What's going on on Hello Giggles today? Hassan is a gifted meat bird a subscription. Oh. Hassan is a gifted a tier one sub to meat bird. They have given seven gift subs in the meat channel. Meat bird. Hassan is -erd. I hope I'm saying that right. Hassan is -erd. Thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate you. And thank you for the follows, guys, too. It means a lot. Thank you. Thank you. This website still exists? You better believe it. It might be very delayed on news. Um, with a lot of editorializing. But it's the hottest spot to get some to get some uh, gossip. Tea. Tea time. Tea time. Tea time. Whoops. Tea time. 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 It's tea time. What was that? What was that thumbnail? I don't want to know. <laughs> I saw that. I don't know. I don't. I don't. I don't. I don't know what Twitch. I don't know. <laughs> what have we got on the tea time? Tea time, tea time, tea time. Okay. <clears throat> we got Savannah Chrysley? Unruly at Airline Gate. I don't know who that is. Show of hands. Who knows who that is? Show of hands. So far, so good. 
We got Britney Spears. Memoir might be muzzled. Okay. Elon Musk's rocket explodes. Royal calls Prince William short tempered. I've noticed with Hello Giggles, they love stories about the royals. They love the royals. Chrisley? Chrisley? Todd Chrisley's daughter, Todd, and his wife are in jail. Damn, she's a jail, jail nepo baby. Sean Mendes and Camila Cabello seen kissing. Whoa, whoa, making out at Coachella. Wait, this is from April. This is on the front page of Hello Giggles. This is at the top of the website. <laughs> Hello, Giggles. What's going on? This is this is your fifth featured article. Yeah, this tea is ice cold. Tea time is over. Yo, guys. Oh, also from April. Megan Fox nowhere to be seen at Machine Gun Kelly's 33rd birthday party. Where's Megan? <laughs> Megan. Okay. What the fuck is this earring, dude? No. Hello Giggles, write an article about this. Write an article about this. Oh my god. It's camp. <clears throat> Do you think he made it himself? Like crafts? Maybe he's just, you know, he's very passionate about vaccines. This is actually pretty cool of him, you know? He's very, he's very passionate about getting your boosters. That's the message he's sharing. So, shout out. You know what would be cool is if, uh, <laughs> I wanna do this, but it's um, the syringe is just a jello shot. And so I can come up to people with my earlobe. I'm just like, Oh, you want to top off? Hassan is a gifted Yuk Butterfinger a subscription. Hassan is a People gifted come a suck on the ears. to Yuk Butterfinger. They have given eight gift subs in the channel. Thank you, Hassan Izzard. Thank you for the gifted. Thank you, thank you. Please go to the office like this. Yeah, I should make these. <laughs> Just wear them one day. Oh, that's so funny. Well, Hello Giggles fell off. 10 life experiences you should check off before 40. Probably 10 new articles on this website would be cool. If they can reach 10 new articles, that would be pretty sweet. Uh, and then once again, Royals. Zoe Deschanel. Find out what's going on over on Hello Giggles. The website needs a makeover. We need to update. Where am I supposed to go for all of my hot gossip now? All my tea time. They gotta they gotta get it together. The EMF just subscribe. They gotta get it together. The EMF, thank you for the prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. Tea time. Tea time, tea time, tea time. That's what... <clears throat> 
That's what King Charles is. His uh, alarm is on his phone. Every morning, he wakes up to that. Every morning, bright and early, it's tea time. Okay, what is this? Emily Ratajkowski on how she became a Taylor Swift fan. I was not a Swifty, and now I'm like, you know what that means? That means I was a misogynist. That I didn't fuck with Taylor Swift. Because I went to her concert, and I was like, this first is an incredible songwriter, performer, and anybody who says anything else, they have issues. And actually, maybe not a very sophisticated palette. If you don't like Taylor Swift, then, like, you don't understand things. This statement would infuriate Sam. <laughs> oh, God. Taylor Swift... Taylor Swift fans um, could like all of the issues that like Tom Cruise is having in the new Mission Impossible movie you know Taylor Swift fans could lock whatever problem he is they could lock that up in like 10 minutes they can They need to send Taylor Swift fans undercover in, like, global operations. Find out dirt, get news, get info. Taylor Swift could definitely unite sort of an uh, Illuminati organization with her audience. They caused a fucking earthquake. These people are out of control. <laughs> Taylor Swift Seattle fans caused earthquake. This is becoming an international incident. Uh, don't make me allow the ads on Fox News. Here we go. A geology professor deemed the event the beast quake. <laughs> the beast quake? The beast quake. This is a this is Guys, there's some warning signs here. There are some red flags here. Taylor Swift's recent Eras Tour concerts had fans in Seattle, Washington shook. Literally. Fans at her Lumen Field concerts in Seattle possibly formed the most vibrant crowd so far, causing the ground to physically shake. According to Western Washington University geology professor Jackie Kaplan, Swift's tour stops on July 22nd and 23rd created seismic activity. The seismologist collected data from a seismometer located near the stadium and determined that something unusual and impressive occurred in the stands. The pop superstars two shows at Lumen Field registered frequencies mostly below the range of human hearing that made the ground shake. Uh... So, I will say I've reports I've gotten from people at the concert said that it was mind-bogglingly loud and that they could very clearly feel the shaking. This 
Swifties are going to be attempting to do this at every show now? Yes, they're trying to open a portal to the underworld. They're going to start jumping at a like a set time. And then they're going to do that all over the globe. And it's like um it's like pressure points, you know, of the earth. You know like in uh, Kung Fu Panda when he goes like bing 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 and like def his opponent collapses, destroys him. Swifties are doing that with the globe. They're bing, 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 jumping at different points all over. And at a certain point, you know, it's going to become too much. When they complete the prophecy and they do the final jump. Samantha Panther are just resubscribed for three months. Samantha Panther. Thank you for the resub. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to hear one final shake it off. And then boom. <clears throat> We're done. They're doing this too close to major fault lines. It's probably part of it. The final album. Taylor's going to be like, all right, everyone. Here we are on the San Andreas Fault. I'll release my final album. But you all need to jump. <clears throat> Sooth just resubscribed for four months. Sooth, thank you for the resub. Four months. Welcome back. Welcome back. <clears throat> as as uh let's see uh whoops hold on i'm trying to find where is it <laughs> i'm trying to find the clip of her dancing to that one song where is it i can't find it hassan is a gifted junk dog underscore gearless a subscription hassan is a gifted a tier one sub to junk dog underscore gearless joe underscore nomad they have given nine hassan is thank channel. you for the gifted sub thank you thank you bro i cannot find this video uh, there's a video of her dancing pretty goofy to that song, Me. It's wiped. I can't find it. And I probably have, like, a, uh, it sent out a red alert to the Swift Anon that I even searched that. Unigoey, thank you for the gifted sub. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, This is such a... This take, though. This is this is a take. She's she's truly posting. She's posting here. This is like <laughs> I was not a Swifty and now I can look back. You know what that means? That means I was a misogynist that I didn't fuck with her. This is like some Heaven's Gate shit. Taylor's Gate. There was there was me before and me after. I get it now. <clears throat> Look. Let me see if I can find this really quick. I don't... Swifties are scary. 
I don't, uh... I don't, uh, I don't want any smoke. Heaven's Gate Taylor's version. <laughs> yeah. Uh, let's see. I was trying to find... Where is it? Oh, is that on a... It might be on a different account. Let's see if I have the picture. Look, I'm not even... I'm not... They'll cancel you now? I haven't even said anything. I haven't even said anything. I'm 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 fine. I'm in the clear. Nothing has happened. We're good. We're crew we're cruising. We're cool. We're so cool. We're ice cold. Where the heck is I've been Swifty Gang, okay? I have photo evidence, if I can find it. I have photo evidence. But I've actually become a bit of a fallen fan. But I don't really talk about that because the Swifties are scary. <clears throat> Uh, let's see. Where's the picture? I'm trying to find it. I'm struggling. Don't say it. <laughs> Fall in, get back up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm all, I'm cool, man. I'm cool. I'm cool. Things are fine. I guess my 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 main thing is that you know, I think it's I think it's impressive that you know, she's built such a giant fan base the way that she's turned her re-releases -re into such an event. Um Taking ownership of her music, all that—I think that's cool. I have no—I have nothing wrong with that. It's got to put the disclaimer in there. I just don't think her music is as good as it used to be. That's just my opinion. I feel like she—you're <laughs> playing with fire. I just feel as if, um, I don't know. I feel like she, she started, um, wearing her influences or her collaborators on her sleeve with the music a little more. And it just felt, I don't know. I just, I just, I didn't. I didn't think he was that good. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like folklore and evermore. I get that it's, it's cool for people. But I think um, there's other musicians doing that style of music in a better way. Don't come for me. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm trying to find my credentials here. And now suddenly the photo has magically disappeared. Isn't that convenient? Where, what, how is it gone? All of a sudden. Don't be sorry. <laughs> You're strong for speaking your mind. Look. <clears throat> I also feel like...
never mind. Never mind. It's never been more over. Never mind. I have no issues. You already said a lot. I haven't even started. <laughs> I'm only talking about the music. Like, I cannot like the music. Like, come on. There's some stinkers on Blubber. Let's be honest. There's some stinkers on reputation. There's some stinkers. And frankly, I don't know. Midnight's had a lot of uh, songs that did not stick with me. Personally, I feel like... Um... I don't know. I'm a, I, 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 I think Red was her peak. And Red was the start, though. Because What's-His-Fuck started to get involved. Um, who started to get... It was uh, Max Martin. Max Martin started to get involved. And that freaking... What's-His-Name? Jackoff. Bro, Jackoff is in, uh, Jack Antonoff, Jackoff gets in everything. He's jacking off everywhere. I feel too much Jackoff in, in the music. I have a lot of hot... I have more Taylor Swift hot takes, but I do not want to say them. <laughs> because I don't want, like, Emily Ratajkowski to say that because I don't like her shit that I'm, like, a misogynist. Like, verbatim. <laughs> Tea time. I kind of have to get ready for work too. <laughs> Look. Hello. No. Oh, thank you. Sam just brought me food. Thank you, Sam. Sam, I got to read you a quote from Emily Ratajkowski real quick. Um, I just uh, I want to get your take. I, I know you don't want to go on camera right now, but that was not fun. Oh, okay. Um, okay, can you run it? Okay. So Emily Ratajkowski just said, just now? Yes. Okay. I was not a Swifty, and now I'm like, you know what that means? That means that I was a misogynist, because I didn't fuck with her. I went to her concert and realized this person is an incredible songwriter, an incredible performer, and anybody who says anything else, they have issues, and they actually, maybe not a very sophisticated palette. If you don't like Taylor Swift, you do not understand things. You're right. My favorite lyric is, come on, kids, spelling is fun. Yes. It's pretty great. If you great. don't like that... And then I'm a misogynist if I don't like that. Yes. Sorry. Sorry, I just had to tell you that quote. Well, I love that journey for her. <laughs> I'm glad that hopefully she can learn now. Yes, she, I, she can enter the next chapter of her life. 
Will you, you, can't, you can't spell awesome without me. You cannot spell awesome without me. Will you take Ruben? No. Hello. Unigi gifted Blizzard Wuffy a subscription. Unigi <laughs> gifted a tier one sub to Blizzard Wuffy. They have given 187 gift subs in the channel. Ruben's mad because he's a Swifty. Will you take my son? He's mad. Come on, Ru. He's horrible. <laughs> Thank you, Unigoi with the gifted. Thank you so much. I get what Emily Ratajkowski is getting at, which I think is that Taylor Swift obviously is a um, very empowered, um, an empowered female voice in the space that, uh, you know, a lot of women look up to and she took control of her career and that is very cool. That is very cool, and we're not diminishing that. My main issue with her, the things that I, I've... A couple little things... A couple little things like I remember when I was a, I was a super fan. If I can find this photo, I'll tell you. I learned guitar by from Taylor Swift because all of her chords uh, on her early music were easy to follow. So it was like I learned how to play guitar when I was like 13, going through her whole discography. <clears throat> I went to the Speak Now tour and the Red tour. I was really into her music. But, like I said, then there were some things that, like I remember, oh God, I don't, I remember the first thing that made me go like, oh, that's interesting, was when, right around that time, uh, that, I don't know if it was um, during 1989 or something, but she was like, she tweeted out, she was like, hey everyone, I have this new video out. If you want to watch it, I need you to go download the MasterCard app. It was something like that. And I remember just kind of being like, okay. That's, that's not a huge, it's not a huge, uh, a huge egregious offense or anything. But I remember that was like the first moment because I wanted to watch whatever the video was. And I was like, I don't want to download the MasterCard app. Why are you making me download this? Why are you asking everyone to download this? Because most of the people are like teenagers and children. Myself included. I didn't have a credit card. I would have had to use my mom's to watch this video. Um, and then, not long after that was that other situation with um, the Spotify thing. Where she made this big declaration that Spotify doesn't properly pay its musicians and so she's leaving Spotify she was like it's bad for artists and everyone was hyping her up like this is so incredible that Taylor Swift is taking a stand against Spotify and their treatment of artists this is incredible turns out like you know not long after that she signed like a fat fat fucking deal with Apple Music. I'm sure like that was probably an insane payday. And then once that arrangement seemed to come to an end, she went and 
put all of her music right back on Spotify. Now, by my understanding, there was no change in how Spotify compensates their musicians between when she originally said this, I'm leaving as to make a stand for the artists. And then when she came back after her giant Apple deal was over, Drew unders, copy unders, copy. maybe I'm misunderstanding the Just situation. Subscribed for six months. I've recently but discovered alcoholic monster energy called the beast and it has overtaken my Modelo. The beast, like the beast quake. That's wild. Chan 1911 gifted Vicky Sober a subscription. Sharon 1911 gifted a tier one sub to Vicky Sober. They have given 466 <coughs> gift subs in the channel. Thank you, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you for the gifted. And thank you, Drew P. Weenie for the resub. Thank you. Thank you. Um. Yeah. Benmo 22 just subscribed. Benmo 22, thank you for the prime sub. Thank you, thank you. Thank you. You guys are being so sweet. Thank you. Um. Yeah. So, anyways, obviously, obviously, like Taylor Swift, I don't think she can single-handedly convince Spotify to change their policies but i just found the whole thing maybe i maybe i'm misinterpreting the situation but her being like i'm doing this for artists got that fat payday it finished and then she came right back to spotify i just found that also kind of interesting And then Z-Mans, Z-Mans SLR, Z-Mans LR. <laughs> Thank you for the sub. Welcome, welcome. Sharon 1911 gifted daughter of Faye Valley a subscription. Sharon 1911 gifted a tier one sub to daughter of Faye Valley. They thank you, Sharon. Thank you, thank you. Sixty-seven gift subs in the channel. She did make Apple change their policy of not paying artists during trial promotions. Okay, well that sounds that sounds good. I just found it odd she went back to Spotify. If it was really an issue. But that's cool that Apple changed something. Uh, also, she kind of shafted Olivia Rodrigo too, right? But that's probably tea for another day. Tea time. <laughs> like, she got the fucking bag off of Olivia Rodrigo. Uh, I didn't know that. Wait, what? I think Taylor Swift has... She gets a payout for like three Olivia Rodrigo songs. Is it three? It's two or three. I, I really, I'm really curious. Um, let's see. I wonder. If it says. Okay, so she got, she got two. She got one here, Taylor Swift, and then she got another one here for Deja Vu. Uh, and then Haley Williams got a, a come up for Good For You. Okay, so it's two Swifties and one Haley Williams. 
But good for you and Deja Vu were like two of her bigger songs on this record. Uh, I'm really curious what Olivia Rodrigo thinks about that. She will never, ever, ever say. But by my understanding, she was like a super Swifty. Olivia Rodrigo was like a diehard Swifty fan. And then she had the freaking fork over the bag. So I'm really I'm really curious where her head is at. <laughs> Shout out to Orod. I love her new song. Sam and I li have listened to it so many times. Vampire. It's a great song. It's a great song. Dear Montgomery just resubscribed for two months. Good morning, fam. Have a safe day. You as Yellow well. Heart. Dear Montgomery. Thank you for the resub. Welcome back. Um, All that being said, I, I was just pointing out a couple things, but it sounds like I'm being a bigger hater than I am. I... I like Taylor Swift's some of the music. I liked, um, I liked, uh, I always listen to her albums when they come out. I liked, uh, which one? I thought Karma was a fun song. I also liked the other one, uh, What's, what's, what is it? Where is it? Um, God, she has so many, so many videos. Where is it? I liked uh, Bejeweled. I thought that was a fun song. You're still running Swifty Defense? They're having me nervous, dude. You can't even say anything. All I'm pointing out is a bit of a, uh, a bit of a, just a couple things that I was just like, oh, okay, whatever. But Stoops need just thank you for the gifted sucks. sub. Thank you, thank you. Swifties are more lethal than Juggalos. Protect your neck. She's cool. Her concerts, that's crazy. Her concerts are like three hours long. I don't think there's a single artist on earth that I would, I could handle going and watching for three hours. That's such a long time. My back would start hurting. Oh, it'd be brutal. But that's impressive. She definitely delivers a, a crazy experience for fans. I think that's cool. And that's all I have to say about that. That's all I have to say about that. G6 take. What did I do? I didn't do nothing. I was very, I was very measured. I was very measured. Ian streaming anything lately TV wise. I I've been watching um, the Mission Impossible movies. <laughs> I've never seen them. Uh, so I've been slowly working through those. Oh, you know something I wanted to talk about Something I wanted to talk about, but it's kind of, it's too late. I need to start getting ready for work. Is this whole reaction drama thing going on on Twitter? It's an interesting, what is it? Mudahar is beefing with XQC and whatever. Whatever they're talking about. They're writing novels. 
I just gotta show the novels being written. Let's see. Where is the novels? Okay, yes, it's with Mudahar and XQC, but yeah, it's 14 pages. Look at this. So you click down the rabbit hole. Oh, show more. <laughs> click down the rabbit hole. Oh, wait. Oh, was that it? Okay, that's not too bad. This is a lot. And then this is a lot. Oh, Ludwig's in the mix. Everyone's in the mix. And then I saw Austin Ox was getting in the mix. Check the edits. Are there a lot? Wait. Oh, okay. There's a couple versions. There's Taylor's version. Doing your tweet again, but a new version. You have to you have to pay eighteen percent to Taylor Swift's uh, enterprise. She owns versions. Yak Yuckener just resubscribed for seven months. Yak Yuckener, thank you for the resub. Seven months. Welcome back. Welcome, welcome. Anyways, these two guys are arguing about. Is it cool to react to long form content? Uh, uh, or is it some form of content theft? Um, uh, and now I'm seeing Austin Ox is posting. Uh, Let's see. He had some like compelling evidence that I thought added to the situation. Okay, here here's his take. I'm against streamers uploading reacts of other full videos to YouTube, but there's a separate argument that streamers watching videos helps the original creator. Hassan watched this video back in April, so I asked its creator to see his analytics and what's happened since. Um, he posted a video. After seven days, it had 3,000 views. This channel had 1,900 subscribers. I saw the video, tweeted about it, and then Hassan watched it on stream. Hassan watched the video in full with 27,000 viewers, then linked it in chat. The day Hassan watched his video, it gained 6,000 views, more than all its views since publishing. And the week after that, YouTube began heavily promoting the video, where it gained 100,000 views in seven days. Alex gained 5,000 subscribers Alex's video which was sitting at 3400 views before now has 189,000 views the day his son watched the video on his stream is marked with a red line so apparently this is where Hassan watched it his channel which had 1900 subscribers now has 17,500 uh, so Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I think obviously that seems like uh, compelling to point out that it did ultimately help this guy. I think it probably has not got stun locked on this for a while yesterday. I would imagine for smaller creators, like if you're getting like 3,000 views or whatever, right? You're not algorithm ready I'm sure it is beneficial for your channel right but if you are say you're Mr. Beast but then ultimately does it even matter so maybe not Mr. Beast I don't know say you're like a decent mid-sized channel that does well you hit the algorithm anyway because you have a following I'm curious then how it feels at that point when you if you're already like a known entity, you know. <clears throat> then you're do you really need like exposure? I don't know. But if you're reacting to it in in giving commentary, I don't know, it's just sort sort of the ecosystem, I guess. I don't think you can really stop it from happening. People love to react. 
People love to react. Uh, nowhere to fly to just resubscribe. Nowhere for to fly months. to. Thank you for the resub. Happy seven months, Ian. Can we get a fit check on the shirt? Looks cool from what I can see. Yes, sure. It says we're all just walking each other home, Ramdas. It's from uh, online just ceramics. Just subscribed for five months. PLS be a longish stream I just got PLS here. PLS be a longish stream I just got here. Million Dollar Fredo, thank you for the resub. Unfortunately, I'm probably going to start winding down here because I got to go to work. It's murky because exposure versus engagement isn't clearly defined. I've never watched a Jubilee, but I have through Ludwig and Hassan. Yeah, like Jubilee, right? They, they hit the algorithm, you know? They're going to get millions of views. Uh, so it's that aspect of it, like Austin Ox's point is really good for smaller creators. Like if I were a small YouTuber or something, I, I would love for people to react to the content. I'm just trying to imagine if I were a bigger YouTuber and say it's a long video, like say you made like an hour long documentary, right? And they watch the whole thing on stream. Um. And you already know that your shit is going to get pushed. It's going to be in the algorithm. I can see why the bigger YouTubers might be like, mm. okay. I don't know. Depends. Depends on your commentary. It's really a case by case basis, right? I don't think it's very cut and dry. I don't think it's very cut and dry. Uh, I still think it's acceptable because I think a lot of the audience that is watching a streamer react to it wouldn't seek it out on their own to begin with. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends, you know. I, uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I guess it depends. I wouldn't know. This is not a problem we have on this channel. So I'm not really defensive about it. <laughs> I'm sure all the streamers are defensive about it. Or the bigger streamers, because, you know. But as of right now, knock on wood, I don't think I've ever done like a long form reaction to anything. <laughs> I don't think so. So I'm still in the clear so I can talk shit. We just be talking. Coffeezilla. That is true. I watched Coffeezilla for like nine hours. And actually, I, I will do a 24 hour watching shit very soon now ultimately it's like what I'm getting at is that I I don't really feel one way or the other about it but I guess like I said it truly truly depends on how you are commentating I would imagine if I made a giant video and I spent a long time on it and some streamer put it on and was barely pausing and played the entire video and didn't say much, I would feel differently versus another streamer pausing and going, well, that's interesting because of this. You know, I think that this is, is it reminds me of this thing that happened and they're doing that throughout the whole thing. I would be like, okay, yeah, sure, go for it. That's that's cool. Um, I don't know. It's kind of like a chicken and the egg argument. It'll just go forever. I have a three hours of white noise video that you have my explicit permission to watch and comment on. That sounds very fun.
Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. But as someone pointed out, yeah, there's probably a lot of content that uh, people wouldn't have seen or heard about, but streamers find it. You know, smaller channels or, you know, hidden videos and help make those channels more of a a known entity. I mean, I had that with, uh, like, Amon, Amon Animations, this channel. I only heard of this channel from uh, a reaction. So... There, there's also like a another metric that is harder to measure where it may be like, okay, uh, if say Hassan watched this Matt Walsh video and Hassan's reaction got more views than the original or whatever. The thing is, watching Hassan watch this converted me into a person who watches every single video that this person puts out now. I watch every video. So that won't necessarily reflect specifically on the video that um, he reacted to that time, but he did convert me into a continued fan of, of this creator. So there's like another aspect to consider. I don't know. But anyways. Uh, all that being said, guys. I need to start getting ready. Hassan introduced me to a lot of creators. Yeah, I'm sure that's the case. You know, that's where reacting to things and watching things and covering things is a good thing, you know? So. What are we getting ready for? Can chat come? I got to go to work. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I'm. I'm more leaning on the side of like, let people react to what they want to react to, you know? As long as they react, right? React to it. I think that's it. Just if, if, as long as it seems like you're making a good faith effort to add commentary, then go for it. Wouldn't even know about H3 without TikTok clips. That's interesting. Shout out to love. <laughs> All right, y'all. No beef with the Swifties. Um, we. No beef. We have no issues. Okay. <clears throat> We have no issues. We are all good and happy, okay? We have no beef. All right, guys. Um, I'm going to go ahead and raid... Let's go ahead and raid Carter. Go say hey to Carter. Uh, start raid. Thank you guys for tuning in. Rise and grind. You know the vibes. Have a good day. Embrace the day. Feeling good. And um, I will catch you guys later. Ta-ta.